This week on Lexington Now, a tribute to our veterans, Leaf Collection and the Gobble Grease Toss. Welcome to Lexington Now for the week of November 11th, 2019. I'm your host, Neil Noah. This week, we honor the brave men and women who have served our nation so valiantly, and we kicked it off with a commemoration at Veterans Park. Good morning and good morning, and welcome to Veterans Park. This, in this place, our city and our community comes together to salute the men and women who have bravely fought and sacrificed for the freedoms that we all value so much today. It's also a place where families, neighbors, and friends gather to play, exercise, and enjoy the wonderful outdoors. All among the beautiful memorials that honor and remember the wars, conflicts, and the service members who fought in them. And we honor the family members of those veterans with our Gold Star and Blue Star memorials here in Veterans Park. Over the past several years, Lexington has worked hard to become a great place for veterans. We formed our Commission on Veterans Affairs. We started hosting the Week of Valor, including the Veterans Parade, which is this coming Saturday. And we've been working with the Kentucky Veterans Hall of Fame to hold their ceremonies in Lexington the past three years. This year, we're very focused on making Lexington even friendlier to veterans. We have a Veteran Affairs Liaison inside the Mayor's office for the first time ever. We announced an effective end to veteran homelessness this spring in Lexington. I've sent off two honor flights and served as a guardian on one of those. We've installed dedicated veteran parking signs at several of our city parking facilities. We're working to become the permanent home of the Kentucky Veterans Hall of Fame. And we currently have an active military intern in the mayor's office, thanks to a program with the Army. And next year, we will host the Veterans Engagement Action Center, a one-stop shop for veterans to sign up for all the benefits they deserve and get on-the-spot support for any problems they are having. Lexington is becoming more and more veteran-friendly. We are intentional about this. This is a very personal issue for me. I'm a military spouse. My husband, Charlie, who's here with me today, is retired Army and Army Reserve. I'm also a... I'm also a military mom. My son is active duty Army. My son-in-law is active duty Air Force. My father, four of my uncles, and one of my aunts served in World War II. I understand what being in the military means from a spouse and a mother perspective and how important it is for our community to support our veterans and their families. I've lived through the times of having a son serving overseas during wartime, not able to talk with him, not knowing if he's safe or not. It is not easy being a military spouse. As a registered nurse, I've worked at a military field hospital. I understand the support needed by our service members who are injured or our veterans who need care. And I want to thank all of those who have served in our military with us today and the family members and friends who support them. There are countless acts of heroism, valor, and sacrifice performed by our service members every day that we never hear about. And this should give us all the more reason to take time to listen to our veterans and hear their stories if they are willing to share. So through the work, of the Veterans Affairs Committee and on behalf of all of my colleagues on the House Committee on Veterans Affairs, I want to just say thank you once again to all of the veterans for your service and your sacrifice. We are continually humbled 
at the sacrifices that our veterans have made for our country. And one day, frankly, is not enough to honor all of the weeks and months our service members have spent away from their families defending the freedoms we all enjoy. So the weather has cooled, the leaves have fallen, and Lexington streets and roads, that means one thing, vacuum leaf collection. Rob Allen is here to tell us about it. So Rob, when does leaf collection start? It's underway, we started Monday. Uh, we're going six days a week, uh, doing extended hours. Um, going to uh, push through until probably late December. Uh, and we start typically on the uh, western side of the urban service area and uh, work our way east and that is due to the prevailing wind and um, also the um, composition of the uh, urban tree canopy, the tree species. If you need to look up your address and you receive garbage collection from the urban county government, it is lexingtonky.gov forward slash leaves. There's a map, you would type in your address, it would tell you the date collection would start for your address. The operators at LexCall are also super helpful. Uh, 311, you can call and uh, they will help walk you through the process. You would have your leaves prepared the night before between the sidewalk and the curb. Uh, make sure there's no trash or debris or, or uh, large sticks, uh, no dead animals, no rocks, things like that. And um, our crews come by, they uh, blow them into the street uh, and quickly uh, you know, kind of slurp them up and then they're taken to the yard waste facility and recycled into compost. We don't ask folks to move anymore. We don't post no parking. We have invested in some uh, really powerful blowers. Uh, we blow around and, and from underneath, uh, you know, and get them out in the street where uh, they could be collected uh, by the vacuum. I, I do, however, caution uh, people about parking on top of leaves. If, if their car is hot, it can actually start a leaf fire and uh, burn your car up. So not a great idea. You're not supposed to put the leaves in the street anyway. You can also cause skidding and um, you know some accidents that way. We've been doing this for, this is the sixth year Streets and Roads has uh, done this program. Each year we get a little better, invest a little bit more in uh, technology and uh, goes a little smoother. In the past, it used to be two passes. Council in 2008 uh, decreed that it would be a one-time pass and our focus would go from vacuum leaf collection being the primary means of leaf disposal to the secondary, uh, with the primary now being the gray yard waste cart that comes every week. Uh, you can also get the uh, coupons for the leaf bags and you know if you put out a hundred bags they'll pick them up uh, on your collection day so it's a that's a really great service and vacuum leaf collection is supplementary uh, you, you know you're out on Thanksgiving weekend and uh, you and the kids rake the yard and, and get them prepared and along with your leaf bags and and uh, we'll take care of it We take them to our transfer station and then they're hauled out to Haley Pike uh, where our contractor turns them into mulch and compost. Eventually they do get worked back into the uh, quarterly mulch giveaways. Um, it's just better for the environment, better for the stormwater system. Um, you know, we all get benefits from trees uh, and, and this is just kind of a byproduct. Um, folks can also uh, you know, compost them at home. They can uh, use them to mulch their own landscape. Uh, they can also uh, take them out once a month if they're Fayette County resident to uh, the yard waste facility uh, there on Haley Pike. After the break, we find out what to do with your Thanksgiving turkey greens.
Welcome back to Lexington Now. Thanksgiving will be here before you know it, and for lots of us that means deep frying our turkeys. But do you know what to do with all of that oil when you're done? We visited with some young scholars at Redwood School, and they gave us some tips on what to do and what they do to help the environment. I'm out at the Redwood School to talk about the gobble grease toss and interview some of the students about it. This annual event is where we collect used cooking oil from citizens who fried turkeys on Thanksgiving. I think it's important to take care of the earth because um, I imagined it. I don't think it's actually true, but I imagine that every time someone um, litters, the rain is the earth's tears. Well, it's important to take care of the earth because, well, if it gets bad, it will just stay like that, Pry. So, and litter will, on the streets, will probably get into our water that comes down from the sky. And um, it will pollute our water and then we won't have any good clean drinking water because I'll go in the sewers and then uh, it'll go into lakes or streams, and yeah. Well, because we only have one earth and we live in it, and it's gonna be that way for a long time, so we should take care of it while we can, because it's where animals and people live. class is doing a thing where we recycle paper and turn it into paper beads and fire starters and we sell it at, we sold it at our fall festival and we're having a maker's fair and we're selling it at that. We compost um, things from our lunches at school and um, like it turn and we, and like it turns into soil that I think we use in our garden. We have an aquaponics tank in our class and we had 10 fish but two died. And we have, and we're starting to grow plants in the top. The fish produce waste which, help, which helps feed the plants and then the plants are, and then the plants help filter the water for the fish. I don't use plastic like that much, like I use metal straws and stuff because plastic eventually gets into the ocean and kills turtles and stuff. So we have two chicken coops, one right there and then the one back there. And um, we collect the eggs, um, instead of buying eggs like to make food and stuff, we use the eggs that we collect here and use them to make projects and stuff. I make sure I make sure I um, put the recycling in the recycling and the garbage in the garbage. Ten to fifteen pounds of oil just to fry one turkey. So then it's really bad for your drains and for the whole environment to pour all that oil down into your drains. And it's not good to have it in, put into a landfill because then it produces leachate and it influence the whole, and it'll influence the whole world. So we bring the cooking oil we got, the gobble grease toss to UK, and then they turn it into biofuels, which is a alternative for diesel fuel. so excited to be partnering with the City of Lexington and the University of Kentucky Center for Applied Energy Research and Kelly Green Biofuels again for another year to help our city be more green this holiday season. Um, and please come and see us. Last year we were able to collect over 400 gallons of used cooking oil and we would love to do it again and help our city recycle their used oil. So if you are a turkey fryer, then you can bring your used cooking oil to the Redwood School the day after Thanksgiving from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. to collect your used cooking oil so that it's recycled into biodiesel. Bubble, bubble, bubble! 
Lexington's fire department recently kicked off their annual toy drive and they need your help to provide a special Christmas for those in need. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you all for being here. And uh, my name is Todd Hewson. I'm a firefighter here in Lexington and the president of the Fraternal Order of Firefighters. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody to the uh, official kickoff of the 2019 Firefighter Toy Program. Today marks the 88th year that the Lexington Fire Department has been a part of helping the children of Lexington have a Merry Christmas in some form or fashion. Over the 88 years, the program has grown bigger and better each year, and with each year we have changed just a little bit at a time. This year is no different, but before I go into the specifics, I'd like to introduce a few people to you. First, I'd like to ask Lexington Fire Department uh, Chief Kristen Chilton up here to say a few words. Good afternoon. It's not just an honor for me to be here today, but a pleasure. The fire service is all about tr 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 excuse me, tradition, and this 88-year-old tradition of helping families bring joy to their homes during the holiday season is a tradition that I'm personally very proud of. We also have a tradition of service, and this program is an extension of that. We serve this co community with not only fire protection, but also fire prevention, public education, responding to hazardous materials and medical emergencies, and so much more. The Fraternal Order of Firefighters, or as we know it, the FOF, is a non-profit charity arm of the Lexington Fire Department. The FOF allows us to also serve in many other ways, not just through the toy program, but also by purchasing back-to-school clothing for children who need it through our Shop with a Firefighter program and helping to provide smoke alarms to keep Lexington families safer through our free smoke alarm program, and that's just to name a couple. Today, I am very proud of these traditions and the services we provide. I am also very proud of our community partners, like the ones behind me, which is Paul Miller Ford and Don Franklin Auto Family, who recognize the importance of these programs and join us wholeheartedly with us in serving this community. Finally, I wanna give a big thank you to the Lexington community. Last year, through your donations, we were able to provide toys to more than 2,200 kids through our program by supporting the program here in Lexington. That means we were able to keep, we were able to help more than a thousand families have a merrier Christmas last year. This is the 88th year our department has sponsored the toy program, and we couldn't have done it without the ongoing support and donations of the people here in Lexington. So thank you all very much. For 88 years, this great program has made sure that our community's children wake up Christmas morning to find gifts under their trees, an incredible record of service. I think I heard you say last year the toy program served over 1,000 children, families and 2,200 children. There's a lot of hard work involved in getting toys under Christmas trees. But Lexington is home to hundreds of elves who help. Firefighters run volunteer, volunteer to run toy programs. Generous businesses, two of whom we are honoring today. Citizens, churches, community groups donate toys. So I wanna thank the firefighters who make this happen every year. And in, uh, in their honor, it's my pleasure to donate a toy fire engine to Chief Chilton, Todd Houston, and the FOP. Every one of us needs a toy fire engine, right? You wanna come? This one happens to be Play-Doh related. Thank you very <laughs> much. Congratulations on a great program. I might have to get one of these for myself. <laughs> well, I'm gonna get them for my grandchildren, so <laughs> thank you all. So now on to the specifics. Uh, there's a lot of information to pass along, uh, but to be considerate to everybody's time, I'll just hit the highlights. The signups for this year's program will begin this coming Monday, November 4th, and run through November 23rd, Thursday, November 21st. The times will be 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Monday through Wednesday, and 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. on Thursdays. We will not have signups Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Uh, the things you'll need to bring are the same as last year, valid and current driver's license or state issue ID, proof of Fayette County residents, um, with a LexServe bill or a, a, a utility bill, and then proof of guardianship. Um, the address for our North Pole this year is gonna be right where we're standing. It's the old Walmart building. It's 3180 uh, Richmond Road. And these and all the other details about this program and the Chuck Williams auction uh, can be found on our website at www.lfdfof.org or by following us on Facebook at Lexington Fraternal Order of Firefighters. Thank you all for coming.
With the upcoming Thanksgiving holiday, we've got an extra busy week of meeting coverage on Lex TV. Chris Edwards has come up with some highlights to look for. Thanks, Neil. This is going to be a very busy week here on Lex TV with lots of meetings to televise and web stream for you. We start on Monday at 1.30 p.m. with the Board of Adjustment meeting. Then on Tuesday, November 12th at 10 a.m., the Council will hold a special Committee of the Whole meeting to discuss fiscal year 2019's fund balance. There were some unspent funds from the last fiscal year's budget, and the Council will decide on Tuesday what they want to do with that money. At 1 p.m. on Tuesday will be the Council's Planning and Public Safety Committee meeting. During this meeting, there will be an update and an internal audit report on the City's Purchase of Development Rights program. The Division of Fire will present their five-year plan to the Council. And then finally, the last presentation will be on what used to be called the Party Plan Ordinance and is now called the Disruptive Premises Plan. Later on Tuesday will be the Council's 3 p.m. work session. During this meeting, there will be another presentation on the Purchase of Development Rights program. Early on Wednesday at 9 a.m. is the Police and Fire Pension Board meeting. At 2 p.m. on Wednesday is the Courthouse Area Design Review Board, followed by the 3 p.m. Urban County Arts Review Board. Then finally on Wednesday at 5 p.m. is the Board of Architectural Review. For Thursday, November 14th at 1.30 p.m., the Planning Commission will hold their subdivision items meeting. Then finishing up the week is the formal council meeting beginning at 6 p.m. At the beginning of the council meeting, there'll be a recognition of the American Legion, which is celebrating its 100th anniversary. And another presentation recognizing the Lafayette Band's high school marching band, which won another state title this year. That's all for this week. Remember, you can catch all these meetings live here on Lex TV and web streamed on the city's website. Neil, it's back to you. That'll do it for this week, but as always, you can keep up with us on social media, check out the latest traffic updates on Twitter at LexRex, or catch our live traffic cams on LexingtonKY.gov. For all of us at Lex TV, I'm Neil Noah, and that's it for now.